I was talking about developing a bag of tools. It's what I call a bag of tools. And by that, what I mean is, you, instead of developing a set meditation practice, which is the way many meditation teachers will teach you, they might give you a mantra and say, repeat this word. Or they give you a, a meditation object and say, you, you watch this object. But ultimately, you are the only one that knows what's going on inside your own being, inside your own body and mind. So there are different times when different meditation methods and techniques will be useful for you. If you're in a very calm, a very beautiful state, you may need a form of meditation that will arouse energy. If you're in a very agitated state, you may want a form of meditation that will calm everything down. If not very much is happening for yourself, you might want to really increase your concentration. Other times, if you have thoughts and feelings arise, you might need to stop meditating on an object, turn the attention around and investigate. You are the only one that really knows what is happening for you. If you have a bag of tools and tricks that you can use, then you are developing a dynamic meditation rather than static meditation. Short term, a static meditation method, if I say do A, B and C, that will work better for you if you are new because no question, no doubt, just go ahead and do it. But if we give you tips and tricks and hints, it will take you longer to piece together a meditation practice, but you will be more stable in it. You will be more able to adjust dynamically to the situation that you're in, to the time that you're in. Your meditation will be different when you're on the bus to when you're sitting at home cross-legged. Your meditation will be different when you are sick to when you're healthy. Your meditation will be different before your meal to after your meal. So, developing a dynamic system is a way to really get a good foundation so that you can bring the meditation to everything. There's said to be three stages to meditation. The first stage is the meditation interferes with your life. At first, what we find is the meditation will interrupt your life. That you don't have 20 minutes or 30 minutes free and spare every day. You do, you just don't want to give up that episode of Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad. What's on TV right now? I don't know. And the meditation will take an effort. It's like, well, I, I'm going to have to clear a space of 20 minutes in order to stop and sit. So that's at stage one. But the next stage is when life starts to interrupt your meditation. When you are happier being by yourself, when you are happier doing your meditation practice, bringing mindfulness into your activities, um, centering your mind continually, and then it gets to the point where like, I don't want to go to work, I just want to do my meditation. I don't want to have to bother with my teaching duties and my, my life stuff. don't want to have to go to Jing Watana and do another visa or all these kind of things. Because the meditation is better. Better than the real world. Isn't that a U2 song? Even better than the real thing. I also, I find this because I really enjoy meditating, but on Mondays and Thursdays I have to go and teach in my university. 
and it's like five hours traveling to get there and back and uh, teaching these students half of whom don't speak English and I don't want to go I just want to stay in my room I know that long term as a life plan doing what you don't like is actually a good thing for you if you just do what you like to do you don't have a good time it's one problem that people have when they retire they think I'll just do everything I like to do and that's not so good for you so the second stage is when life starts to interfere with your meditation and then the third stage is the life and meditation are absolutely no different now that takes a time to get to that level I remember some years ago I interviewed Bhikkhuni Damananda and I asked her about how she draws a balance between being the abbess of a temple of the various political and social difficulties that she and her nuns are having and her own practice and she said there isn't any difference between my practice and deal with, dealing with those things at the time I thought she was showing off but now I, I can <laughs> Um, I'm much more there myself these days there isn't that much difference between the meditation because that quality of awareness that you are developing meditation is continuously there it's ticking along, it's continually uh, present for you so these three stages of meditation